This is the second part of a, uh, an uninformed, as I admit to be, uh, comparison between uh, three graduate level abstract algebra books. Uh, all I have done is uh, self-learn uh, group theory out of Galleon at this point, so I'm, I'm barely qualified to make this uh, comparison, but I will try. And just let me know if it's of any use to you. I'll, I'll be curious, Give me in the, hit me in the comments. Uh, I already have a part one, and in uh, part one, I laid out basically the premise of how these books fit uh, in the curriculum as I see it. And so uh, I also showed Dominant Foot and I also showed the algebraic geometry books by Sariski and Samuel. Um, and then talked about how the, all three have an undergraduate uh, book that goes along with them. And they all uh, use category theory. I showed the table of contents uh, and I made my uninformed pick, which was uh, Rodman. <clears throat> and um, but at the end of that video I realized that I had not shown the books at all so I will do that in this video I will also uh, talk a little bit about the undergraduate books and then the nuts and bolts of this video is going to be a very rudimentary uh, uh, comparison of pages and problems of the different types of content that is found in these three books so let's show let's show uh, Lang's first Okay, so again, last time I showed the table of contents for this video. I mean, I'm sorry, for this book. And um, let me see, there was a paragraph in here that I wanted to also highlight. I highlighted one paragraph last time, but, oh yeah, here it goes. So, so Lang discusses how uh, he wanted to have a book in abstract algebra that helped people who work on topology, partial differential equations, differential geometry, algebraic geometry, analysis, and represent, uh, representation theory, as well as just abstract algebra proper, and also algebraic number uh, theory. So this book is really, he intended it to be like the dictionary of abstract algebra, and that's what it looks like, and that's what it looks like to be. Now, I already showed... Uh, the, the front matter, and I already showed the table of contents. Uh, basically, this book is divided into what is called, what I would call uh, the abstract algebra you did in undergraduate, but harder part, okay, followed by some Galois theory, then also some, uh, some content that would be in commutative algebra would be the prerequisites for algebraic geometry, then some content that would be uh, let's do a, a linear algebra, but now in a graduate algebra book with all the trimmings. Uh, and then some homological algebra. Now, of course, uh, that really means that this book is really several books. Uh, so, for example, and I haven't made a video of this, of this book yet. I haven't had time to, but uh, this would be the kind of book that would have content similar to what's in... Uh, in um, in Lang and in the other two books in which you work through linear algebra in a graduate level setting okay for the graduate or advanced undergraduate students right so you would really do all of the linear algebra assuming the theory of modules you're assuming that somebody's at the graduate level okay and so of course this book has I think more content or as much content as Lang uh, I haven't compared them, but I'm just mentioning that in that case, uh, that's something that s separates the three books of how much uh, linear algebra at the graduate level they contain, also how much Galois theory they contain. This is an undergraduate book. I plan to make a book a video about it in the future, but I'm still not quite ready. Even though it's undergraduate and the content of Galois theory that's discussed in these other three books, these graduate books, are more at the graduate level. And then also, of course... Uh, little known tidbit that I came across is that Rodman has a, uh, a homological algebra book. I did not know that, and I got it really as a collectible. I'm trying to find it back here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so actually, Rodman has a homological algebra book. Uh, of course, it's uh, it's it was published in the old way. I remember the advanced physics books that were published by Wiley, the advanced book program, uh, used to have the f this format 30-something years ago. Okay, so back to Lang. 
because I did not show the book itself, the innards of the book. Okay, so again, there's just a lot of content in this book. I am not particularly fond of his writing style uh, because his writing style reminds me of lecture books uh, that were that have been written for people in universities. They're not really meant for, uh, you know, semi-mathematicians like myself, pseudo-mathematicians like myself. But the content is here, and actually, as a as a, as a project of mine, long term. Someday I would like to cover a, a Lang book so that I can stop saying that I do not like his writing style. He does have examples, lots of examples. He does have proofs, and he does have problems. So what's why am I saying that? There are also references within each section for books and papers on the subject. Just giving you a feel for the, the book itself. You can stop it and, and read it if you're not on a cell phone. Actually, I should do that as well. Just zoom in a little for my dear uh, cell phone users. So yeah, I mean, it's got it's got a lot of content. I mean, you it would take somebody a good, I mean, a good three semesters to cover this book, I would imagine, in a, in a classroom setting, and definitely a good year and a half or two at my current pace uh, to to use it. So it's it's just. It's, it's multiple books in one. That's basically what I would say about uh, about Lang's book. Okay. And then in the case of the problems, it's got a lot of problems, but also, and I'll show the counts when I compare counts, they're not fair counts because this book has fewer problems, but it does have um, dumb it and foot style problems that I would call problems that are really involved. Uh, and so, I think in the case of the other two books, there's a tendency more for the problems to not be as involved and long as they are in uh, in Lang. So the comparison of, of, of problem counts is not a fair one, and Lang comes out having a lower count. But again, I'm just trying to establish that the criteria is not that good. Uh, but it's just a rough criteria, just to say something as a means of comparison. Okay, so that I've shown some of uh, Lang. Now I'll show some of Rotman. Okay. Um, and again, I already show, showed the front matter, so I'm going into the book proper. Okay, so just as with, in the case of Lang, uh, Rotman's got the usual fare of examples uh, and exercises and theorems and proofs. Uh, now, in the case of Rotman, there are many more problems than there are in Lang, but as I showed before with some examples, they're not as long and involved as the ones in Lang in some cases. And so the, the problem counts may be uh, somewhat of an inaccurate way uh, to compare these two books. Okay. And again, for, for the full discussion of the um, table of contents, please do refer to the first part video in this series. And it will be a while before I do a part three, uh, just because I feel like the next uh, one that I do, I got to know a little of algebra, abstract algebra, to be able to say more than just uh, pedantic counts and uh, looks at the table of contents. Okay, in the case of Hungerford, he also has a lot of problems, uh, lots of discussion, examples, theorems and proofs. I mean, the usual fare. Uh, all three books are covering the same material, except, and I'll show in the counts, there are, there are major uh, choices that were made by Hungerford and Robman to not have as much content as Lang. But again, you, the, some of the content that is in Lang that is not in the other two books, uh, you could also cover uh, just by working through a whole book on homological algebra or a whole book on linear algebra. So I broke down the content, okay, for Lang, Rodman, Hungerford, and then I did a problems count, okay? And uh, at first I thought, well, is it like this? Is it really that Hungerford is a subset of Rodman that is a subset of Lang? 
or is it more like this? And I think what came out is more like this. Hungerford is within, has less content than Lang or Rodman, uh, but there is some content in Rodman that is not in Lang, okay? And then Lang's got a ton. <laughs> it just does. So it's about 222 pages of what I call algebra proper, rings, uh, groups, and fields. Uh, I would say, I think it looked like uh, 197 was the comparison between Rodman and Lang for the algebra proper, but it I, I had a hard time breaking it up, and I think someday I'll, I'll be better equipped to do that. But it looked like Hungerford just did a lot of algebra, abstract algebra proper. Okay, now when it came to the uh, the, the the material that looks like it's algebraic geometry, commutative algebra material. There were there was only 35 pages that I could find in Lang, but then again, this is an uninformed opinion. I believe Lang has as much as Rodman. They they cover the material, and likewise for Galois theory. I saw 50 pages in Rodman, I saw 80 in Hungerford, <clears throat> and I saw 71 properly labeled as Galois theory. But again, take it for what it is. Then in the case of uh, uh, advanced linear algebra. Uh, Lang clearly has a lot of content, 257 pages. Uh, then Rodman's got 134 pages, and Hungerford's got a very small, just one chapter. One chapter, but the one chapter in Rodman was longer and contained more. So I think when it looks, it looks like if you compare just abstract algebra proper, these three books are very similar. And someday, of course, I'll, I'll, the comparison that I want to make after I complete Galleon, this will be months from now, uh, this is September of 2020 when I'm uh, 2025 when I'm filming this. Uh, we'll have to focus on this content. This is the the next comparison. This is what part three needs to be, but I need to learn a lot more before I do that. Then, in the case of homological algebra, there is no content in Hungerford, and there is some about the same length it looks like between Lang and Rodman. Then, when it comes to problem counts, and yes, these are all account counts by chapter, but I'm not going to go into that really. It's 515 problems in uh, Lang, 863 in Rodman, and 819 in Hungerford. Now, of course, does this mean that, and again, this is for a future video, uh, for future learning on my case, does this mean that because Hungerford has 819 problems and it's mostly just good old abstract algebra at the graduate level, plus a little bit of linear algebra. Does that mean that there are more abstract algebra graduate level problems in Hungerford than there are in Rodman? I do not know. So that's something for me to figure out at some point, just out of curiosity. And I would venture to say that because of what I showed up, though, there's not a good one-to-one -one mapping between how the problems are done in Lang versus how they're done in Rodman and Hungerford. And I'll show examples from Hungerford and you'll see that the style of problems in Hungerford are about the same as they are in Rodman. There, there, I did not see too many very long problems as the way Lang does them. Okay, so I think that lays it out. And I'll show the, the undergrad books just because I think they're interesting to compare as well briefly within the context of the... Uh, their graduate counterparts. So in the case of the undergraduate books, Rodman's is tiny, and so is Lang's by comparison with Hungerford. Okay, and so Hungerford has more content that probably would normally be covered in a one semester course. That's just an interesting tidbit. I'm not sure that it matters for comparing the graduate level courses, but I mean the graduate level books, but here they are. And in the case of Lang's, it's more like a lecture-based book. And I've shown this book before. Um, it's got all the things that it needs to have, but it just doesn't have as many words that for a self-learner, I think, are more important. And Rodman does have that. But of course, uh, of the three, my, my winner is Hungerford because it's got answers in the back and it's got generally just more content more content and it's it's more aimed at babies like myself so then i basically have laid out the all that i could at this point in time uh to compare these three graduate level books very uninformed 
uh, video, my friends. Uh, hit me in the comments if you think you found this, this useful. And if you didn't also, I'd be curious to know why. Thank you.